everyone. I'm Darren Karp, host of ID's latest podcast, Betrayal with Darren Karp, which I am so utterly excited for. But we've got something super exciting for you all today. Let me start off with a little download. Each month, we're going to dig into some of the most disturbing and fascinating true crime stories. They're gripping, they're captivating, they're tragic. These are the cases that keep us up at night, which is why we've started our very own ID Conversations. Get it? Today, we're going to discuss the disappearance of a 37-year-old Louisville, Kentucky mother of two, Andrea Knabel. Now, some of you might already be familiar with this case, but for those who aren't, I just want to break it down in a timeline for you all real quick. Andrea Knabel vanished uh, in the early morning hours of August 13th, 2019, leaving her friends and family heartbroken and confused. The ironic thing about her disappearance, she actually devoted her life to finding missing people with the group Missing in America. Since her disappearance, Andrea's case has become a twisted web of numerous theories, hundreds of leads, and countless suspects, none of which have brought authorities any closer to answering the question, what happened to Andrea Knabel? Andrea's case is now featured on the gripping four-part Discovery Plus docuseries, Finding Andrea. Finding Andrea takes a fresh look at the case. New evidence is revealed, causing Andrea's family and friends to wonder, how well did they actually know Andrea? You guys, the twists and turns are absolutely mind-blowing in this case. Just when you think you know what happened to her, another lead takes you down an entirely different direction. Let's take a closer look at Finding Andrea. 600,000 people go missing a year. That's just the United States. Missing in America, it's actually a, a group of ladies that go out, we search for missing people. There's not enough law enforcement to do what we do. Missing in America has joined the search. We're contacted multiple times a day. We're trying to hit the streets, talk to as many people as we can. We did love what we were doing very much. <laughs> and then it all changed. My name is Andrea Knabel. I'm a private investigator for Missing in America. I'm very strong in analyzing and research. I'm good going undercover. Andrea went missing. She's helped in the search for missing people in her area and beyond. And now, a Louisville mother of two has ironically disappeared herself. How do you have a person who goes and looks for missing people turn up missing? It's not just another case. This is our friend. Of course, you've got the possibility of abduction, sex trafficking. Did she walk away on her own accord? One scenario is Andrea's disappearance had something to do with her working undercover. This newest case, a rather dangerous case. The man missing was involved in criminal activity. There's some pretty scary people involved. Are we talking about cartels? Andrea, I think, had different sides of her with different people. If you look at her Facebook profiles, she's got three or four of them. I was shocked. She was like a chameleon. Downward spiral are the two words that we kept hearing about Andrea's life. Her family thought that she was like a failure. Somebody's responsible for this, and I got to find out who, and I got to find out why. That's my office, all burned up. Wondering if we're getting too close to something. I hear fights all summer long. In Andrea's bedroom, there was a hole like somebody's head had hit into it. No one has seen this footage of her before now. I don't need to talk to her while she was talking. I've had people contact me and tell me to leave the floor or I'm going to be up next. I'm going to be next. I'm risking my life. All you guys are risking your life. We're looking for this young lady right here. She's been missing for 17 months. Yeah, she's been here. Oh, my goodness. Recently. Finding Andrea, streaming October 15th, exclusively on Discovery Plus, the streaming home of true crime. I mean, this is entirely gripping to say the least. It's just a heartbreaking case. Hopefully we'll have some answers from watching it. But if you haven't had a chance to watch, the first three episodes of Finding Andrea are available to stream now with the fourth and final dropping on Discovery Plus this Friday, October 29th. You definitely don't want to miss it. 
So this actually brings me to the truly exciting part. Today, we have some of Andrea's friends and family, as well as an expert investigator on her case to join us. We're very lucky to have them. You may, you may recognize these folks from the series. Let's welcome Michael Knabel, Andrea's father, who's been tirelessly tracking down leads in Andrea's case since she disappeared in 2019. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And of course, Nancy Schaefer, Andrea's best friend and the founder of Missing in America. Nancy, so good to see you. Thank you for having us. And Joseph Fanchuli, a retired Lakewood homicide detective who has been investigating Andrea's case and has discovered some really compelling evidence. Well, thank you again for all of you taking the time. We appreciate it so much. And obviously the goal in mind to help find Andrea here. To start this off, before we take everything back to that tragic day, Andrea went missing. I'd love to hear from some of the people who loved her the most, Nancy and Mike, about what Andrea was like. And Mike, could you describe to us what Andrea was like? I mean, what was she like growing up? What kind of person was she? She was, um, well, every, every child has their gifts. She was an unusual child. She was very precocious, very joyful. Um, seemed to be well ahead of her time, could, could interact with nearly anyone of any age at a very young age. School was a breeze, so she was gifted in that respect as well. And uh, anyway, she carried that over into caring and helping other people, starting out with her sisters. Even at a young age, she acted as a second mother to them and really kind of continued that uh, throughout her whole life, I think. When you when you think about Andrea, what's the thing you love most about her? If you could pinpoint it to maybe one thing, which I know is probably pretty hard. Um, there, there is. Uh, it, it's just her ability to. She had special abilities to make relationships and friends of anyone, uh, anywhere, strangers. It didn't really matter. She would end up knowing everyone, and I thought that was a true talent that very very few people possess. That uh, she definitely had. So I do remember that, and. Um, I remember that and her being so helpful with her sisters uh, growing up. She was uh, very nurturing and, and it was just um, it was a joy to see her uh, intermingle with them and help them so much. Nancy, I want to bring you in here uh, just as a close friend of Andrea. Could you tell us how you guys met originally? What were her sort of best qualities as a friend? Well, um, one of the things that really stuck out to me when I, I spoke to her, it was we reached out to each other regarding her friend who was missing because her and Suzette were kind of going at it, you know, alone. And she was determined to find this girl. Um, and nothing else mattered to her. Work, nothing. But making sure that this girl is safe, basically. Um, when I met her, she was extremely street smart. Like when I, the first day we met up to go down to Lexington on that particular case, she wouldn't even drive in the vehicle with me because she didn't know me. She's very um, smart, at, you know, protective that way. But after seeing her work the case, I was just like, she has a talent that nobody... I have ever seen in my life. How close did you two become? We became very close. Um, one of the reasons why we bonded, we had similar childhoods, um, similar experiences, and we shared our inner most emotional, you know, something you would normally share with someone, especially when you have pretty much two guarded people. Um, we related on um, to a lot of aspects. Uh, she was always there for me, vice versa. And she's just like that, that one loyal person. Yeah, common theme here seems to be that she just has an incredibly big heart and is such a mm -hmm. warm person with obviously dedication for sure. Right, Nancy? She'll be upset and she'll pull you and drive. We used to drive down the road. I used to get upset all the time because of the bullying on Facebook. And she used to pull me and she's like, let's go for a ride. And you'd have to, she did a Live Your Best Life song. And... <laughs> She made me smile the whole way and scream the song, <laughs> but it was like in a good way. You know what I'm saying? It just kind of took, I, I can't say there's one person, maybe one other person that I've ever had in my life that um, had those kinds of qualities that cared about how people feel and, you know, just kind of was this like, and Mike was right how he described her. She could 
Gawain being a boardroom, extremely intelligent. I mean, probably overly intelligent, but that's based off of my looks looking up from the outside, you know, and um, I was just completely impressed. And uh, she helped a lot of families with our group. Yeah, it seems that I really appreciate you both sharing that. I'm sure it's it's hard to kind of bring up these memories, but uh, I, I want to dive a little bit deeper on, on the day that she, I want to revisit the day that she disappeared, August 13th, 2019. Mike, Andrea disappeared in the early morning hours of that late summer day. I cannot imagine how gut-wrenching and awful that day must have been for you. I, I don't even want to try. How do you remember the events of that day? Well, it, it was gut-wrenching in retrospect because my last experience with them, I didn't know that she was going to go missing. So I received the proverbial call that all parents fear at exactly 1.38 in the morning. I'll never forget it, ever, ever, ever. And um, it was Erin calling me to ask for advice on what to do. Andrea had returned to her residence for the second time. It was very late. Her house was under remodeling and painting, so everyone was sleeping in the lower level. And um, Andrea was still up and, and not ready for bed. And Aaron had to get up and be a very to work very early. So I advised Aaron, and she, you know, it can be my fault. A lot of people on social media bring this up uh, as if it's Aaron's fault. I advised Aaron to tell Andrea to go back home and let's call her mother to make sure she gets in. And for every piece of information I know, that happened and that Andrea did make it back to the house. So I don't want Aaron to feel guilty about anything like that. Uh, for all we know, Andrea did make it back to the house. So after that occurred, uh, there was some talk later in the day, everybody was trying to find out where Andrea was. She didn't have her children. So Andrea, would it would be normal for her to go stay with a, a friend or two, even for an extended period of time, for a, a day or two or three sometimes. So we really didn't think anything, but. We, we communicated back and forth, wondering where she was, and, and I think other people tried to contact her as well. So uh, it, it went on and on for a couple of days, and then we decided, I asked Erin to go ahead and file the missing persons report, and she did. Nancy, you were obviously Andrea's best friend and worked alongside her for a number of years in Missing in America. How did you feel when you heard she went missing? How was that day for you? I was completely shocked, but then again, on the, the smart side of myself says, well, maybe she's just, you know, because of the circumstances, maybe she's just somewhere off vetting, you know, or letting out steam, you know, because like Mike said, that wasn't uncommon of her. Um, she would either go with her ex-roommate's house sometimes, because when I was in Kentucky, before I left, I picked her up at that, that ex-roommate's home. So she was staying there when... I was getting ready to leave to Pennsylvania. So that what Mike said is absolutely true. Um, but when I got no phone call back, uh, no FaceTime, nothing was responded. That is bizarre for Andrea, especially with me. Um, we had just been talking, I, I think over um, Facebook regarding some things, but hindsight being 2020, um, you know, when you're trying to deal with your own stuff, sometimes you don't see the red flags. And, uh, you know, I did really, I was just like, ah, oh, she's probably just fencing off. And how did you mobilize Missing in America to search for her? I mean, what are some of the first steps that you guys kind of take and your organization took in order to find somebody who's missing? Um, the normal protocols with this particular case did not get into effect because normally we have a certain waiting hour and stuff like that and we have to make contact with law enforcement but we knew from it being andrea one of our members we kind of went into high gear because nothing was normal for her nothing that was happening was normal at all so i i can see her being upset at somebody and not you know wanting to do you know, answer a phone call or whatever, and she's just out off at a friend's venting. But um, there was no reason for her not to answer my phone calls. And we've been chatting back and forth on Facebook. So, um, you know, off and on throughout that week before. So it, 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 there was no reason for her not to answer my call. She would not not answer my calls. 
I believe in my heart. So I knew something was really wrong. Well, as we know, Andrea's case is unfortunately still an active investigation almost after two years with many, many, many questions left unanswered, especially as we see in Finding Andrea. This has left a huge hole in the hearts of everyone who knew and loved her, of course. However, Nancy, Mike, and others have pushed through and continue to move along the investigation. As we see in the series, they've tracked down new leads, uncovered new evidence, and introduced new investigators to the case. Mike, over the past two years, what has it been like not having any answers, any concrete answers in Andrea's disappearance? Does it affect your hope at all? It, it doesn't affect, it does not affect our hope, but um, what, what one does is you just live, you learn to live in grief, but you still have to be functional. And all the stages of grief are very difficult to go through. Uh, Aaron and I, who we are kind of a team, we've decided to try to replace the depression part of it with activity. So that, that has been our, our answer. We don't want to cocoon and take antidepressant drugs. We, we want to get out there and be active and do something to, to let that help us through this. And so that's, that's what we've tried to do. I can't say we've been successful all the time, but we, we just made it um, kind of a mission to, to try to fight through this with activity rather than to, uh, to, to sit back and um, uh, let it totally depress you and, and ruin the other aspects of your life that are good, like grandchildren or children, something like that. Well, not to harp on it too much, but as we sort of see in the Discovery Plus series, you have been working around the clock tirelessly, nonstop, trying to track down every possible lead to find her, no matter how out there those leads might be. How does that feel? And is it every lead that comes in you're going to follow? Everything was frantic, really, with me in the search and Aaron and others for the first 500 days, maybe. That's a long time. And so you're, you're nearly out every night to the middle of the night or middle of the morning, if you will, and operating on fumes and um, to, to the point where it can possibly damage you. Uh, and you, you, everybody has a, has a breaking point. And I was very near mine. One night when I was coming home, I was three blocks away from my home and my brain couldn't tell what I was doing or where I was. And so I, I found then it was time to pull back a little bit. So now everything I do is more targeted towards things that are current. What I would do in the past is I'd, I'd go back to four or five, even six places that were previous lead sites and go back to them relentlessly in, in different times of the day and night. And um, uh, I no longer do that to the same extent unless there's something current that comes along because we, we truly feel that Andrea is probably not, a, probably not here in open sight. Um, if, if we're going to find her alive and well, it's, it's going to be somewhere else. That's why we hope this uh, discovery exposure and others can, can help us find her. Well, piggybacking off of that, Nancy, what's it sort of been like continuing the investigation? How do you keep the momentum going in cases like this that have gone on for months and years? Andrea. My love and loyalty to Andrea. But I want to say something to Mike. I'm kind of a little shocked of what he just said because I've had the same thing happen to me three or four times where I literally lost time. Wow. It's a lot to relate to on this case. You know, thanks to you, Nancy, we do have a new investigator looking into Andrea's case. Uh, he's a handsome one at that, retired Lakewood <laughs> homicide detective. Joseph Fanchuli. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, he's a handsome, I, I can say it, but uh, can you explain how you met Joe and how he began to sort of get involved in Andrea's case before I bring Joe in himself? Well, you know, you know, I had reached out to Joe on Facebook regarding Andrea's case because I was feeling frustrated. I was feeling like it wasn't going anywhere. Um, it was probably the most complicated case I've ever had to deal with on the professional side and not on the professional side. That has been my biggest challenge. Um, it's either I don't do anything and it kills me. Either I do do stuff and it kills me more. So it's kind of, but my love for her, absolutely. But yeah, I reached out to him. Um, we hit it off. And uh, one thing led to another, I had no idea about the other background of him, just basically like conversations. 
So as the relationship got deeper, um, it wasn't until almost like a year um, where he saw me broken down. I would never ask someone or I would never put someone in a position and say, this is what I need you to do. Or like, I wasn't with him for that reason. Um, he just hugged me and said, let's go find your friend. Wow. And wiped away my tears. All right, Joel, you've been sitting there patiently and silently, so I want to bring you into this conversation. Joe, you spent a long time working as a homicide detective in the Lakewood Police Department. I can only imagine the things that you've seen and read about. What were your first impressions of Andrea's case, and, and how did you really start to dive into it? We were very lucky that the Discovery folks came along when they yeah. did, and it's been a year, a little over a year, since um, they got involved. And they asked me if, if I would basically be willing to look at this as a cold case yeah. and follow me around and see what came out of it. Um, none of this stuff was scripted. Um, just sort of the way it, I've always done things by the seat of the pants and moving one foot in front of the other. That's how I always describe working a case. It's one foot in front of the other. Um, I did a, you know, I kind of did a deep dive with Nancy about, about Andrea, about what, you know, everything she knew about Andrea. Um, I started digging into Andrea's social media life. And the more I did that, the more I would find people she was connected with in her Facebook lives, because she had several um, who had criminal records uh, were involved in drugs, um, sort of things that were a little shocking to Nancy, having lived with her, and we we sort of talked through these things, and then of course you know enter the enter the discovery folks, and and we started working the case. <clears throat> um, you start working the way you start working any case. You at the beginning you you have to know everything you can know about the victim. You have to know everything you can know about the circumstances of when she was last seen and what happened after that. And with, without going into a lot of detail that folks will see when they watch the show, um, we turned over more rocks than I ever thought there would be. Um, I, I've said this before, this, this is one of the most complicated cases that I've worked on in 52 years of doing this only because it has so many tentacles. Um, Andrea's life stretched into so many different areas and she interacted with so many different people. And, and unfortunately, Andrea got herself into some life situations um, that put her at risk. And you, you've heard from Mike and you've heard from Nancy what Andrea was like. I, I don't think Andrea realized the risks that she put herself into with some of the things that she did. So we began following those trails. Um, people came forward, uh, interviewed these people and they led to somebody else who led to somebody else. But uh, there were things that I found as I began working this that were very disturbing to me. And you know, I don't, I don't like to beat up on, on anybody, particularly law enforcement, but um, this, this case was not investigated from the get-go. Uh, it, it was quite a while before anyone really started doing any looking into this case. Uh, and it was precipitated by some news coverage. Um, people started to come forward who'd never been talked to, said they were waiting for somebody to talk to them and had things to tell me. Uh, I did... I did a total neighborhood canvas from Andrea's mom's house all the way to Aaron's, knocking on doors. People told me things that they that they observed and heard they'd never been talked to. Um, since the first two episodes have aired, people have come forward who knew a lot about Andrea's life, some of whom knew Andrea since she was a child and told me things that confirmed certain things that I'd found. This, this is very recently, this is within the last couple of weeks, um, have added to 
the information base that I have. And the real disturbing thing to me about this is that at least two of these people were told not to talk to me when I was first in Louisville. Um, that's, that's disturbing. Um, you know, when we did, when we did the Dr. Phil show last week, he, he made a statement. This is an all hands on deck case. Yep. You need everybody that knows anything to come forward. And that's what we need. Some of those people are coming forward. And I know that as the episodes continue, other people will come forward and confirm things. And the, the list of possibilities of possible scenarios of what happened to Andrea will whittle down to the most probable. And it will just take that one or two people who have the tiny piece of the puzzle to fit in to resolve this. And I'm hopeful that that will happen. Um, Andrea has a great platform here. She has a worldwide platform right now. Um, this is about finding Andrea and we will find her. I really hope so. I mean, I think one of the most fascinating things about finding Andrea to your point, Joe, is that we get to sort of see all of you track down leads in real time and new evidence in real time Nancy, I want to take this to you kind of first. How challenging was it to discover some of this evidence in Andrea's disappearance on camera? It, it was shocking. Um, you go through a whole world of emotions because, you know, you know you carry yourself in a certain way and uh, you know how you've been your whole life. Like, I never hung out with people who did drugs. You ask my sister, you ask a lot of people who know me. So that actually put into like the aspect of me not really knowing too much about what are the warning signs, what does it look like, stuff like that. Yes, Missing America hands, handles drug cases, but we have a person that is actually a recovered addict uh, almost 20 years that handles these cases because she knows and she knows the ins and outs and she knows you know, just how that platform works. And I wanted to say that Andrea, I guess hindsight being 2020, I guess I should have, I should have noticed, but I didn't. And it hurt, you know, when finding out that stuff was like a whole emotional roller coaster, but she's still my friend. She's still my best friend. And I don't think any less of her today as I did in the past. Here, here's the real, so, here's the real point. Um, I, I've worked cases over the years where sometimes the victims were not good people. Sometimes they were very bad people. Right. It doesn't matter. A victim is a victim. Whatever problems Andrea had in her life, she did not deserve this. Andrea and, was a good person, a very good person. And I know she was a very good person to me. Mike I, Mike, I want to bring you in on this too. You know, obviously the entire case has obviously been hard for everyone involved, but were there any particularly hard moments during filming that kind of stuck out to you or ones that you struggled with kind of having on camera? Well, of course there was. Um, when, it's, when it's your own flesh and blood, it's your daughter. She's, her middle name's named after me. It's, it's extremely personal. And when you get into the intimate details of your interactions or the lack thereof or the problems she and I had together, um, it got very emotional, uh, eyes watering. Um, and, and that was for Andrea and, and part of the fam family dynamics were really damaged due to this even further. And so a relationship with my youngest daughter, Sarah also had some major cracks in it as well. But, um, it, it, it goes far and deep and it's very personal, personal. And it just, um, it, uh, it, it's something that you just kind of work your way through and try to withhold emotions. And as I'm talking about myself, I usually release them when no one else is around. And so uh, the emotional aspect of it when it's family or is extraordinarily intense and lingering uh, far after any time we deal with this and such as what we're doing today here. You're forgetting that I spent many, many months and months out on surveillance with you. Uh, 
hanging flyers, doing all kinds of things, tromping through the woods at three o'clock in the morning. I'll never forget that, Nancy. I appreciate it. Thank I, you so much. I know, I know that, Mike. Um, but when I say that I, I've worked a lot of cases in my time, and this is the most dedicated father and sister that I've ever seen. I mean, we 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 sometimes we be, would be even thinking the same thing. I'm like, oh, Andrew used to like to go to the casino. Let's let's scope out the casino, see if I remember anyone that I she used to talk to or something, or I'd check her player card, talk to the manager. You're just thinking everything you could think of. And uh, I call Mike and he's like, I'm at the, <laughs> you know, like, do it. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm True story. How many times that happened? True yeah. story. One, one, of the, one of the difficult parts of this for me is mm. maintaining that, that, that professional um, stepping back and not becoming emotionally involved. And obviously I became emotionally involved uh, because of Nancy. But when Mike and I met, and, and Mike and I have had a lot of late night conversations, we've, we've had a lot of hard conversations face to face. I've developed an emotional bond with Mike. Um, this case is just different. It's just different. And, I, and I, I am just committed to resolving this and it will get resolved. It looks like the dedication from the team, I think is indicative of the type of person that Andrea is, uh, you know, surrounded by loving friends and family, clearly who are dedicated to solving it. You know, Joe, I just want to kind of bring back something that you said, because you, you said recently in the past couple of weeks that you were told that people were specifically told not to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering from your standpoint, how different was tracking down leads and evidence in a case like Andrea's on a TV program with, with you know, the, the exposure that Discovery has, as opposed to working on a case in the police department? Well, I, I've never worked on something with people following me around yeah. and, and a camera over my shoulder, um, you know, go knock on a door and start to talk to somebody and they have something to say and then, you know, get into the conversation with what, what you know, these, these people across the street in the car, would, would you mind if they came over with a camera? <laughs> and of course, some people yeah, said, you know, know, absolutely not. Yeah. And that was cool. You know, I, I still recorded their their statement and you know it, it became part of the evidence but it was different it was definitely different but I, 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 I have to say it again we would not be where we are today without the discovery people doing what they did mm -hmm. um, the, the, the astronomical expenses alone um, for us to be able to do this I don't think her case would be where it is today it and was we're truly grateful for that it was so terrific to interact with these people mm -hmm. because the people that that I interacted with in this production were top-notch folks they were people who they are people who are involved in many many true crime series from camera people to the directors um I still remember, you know, driving back from an interview or on my way somewhere and I've got this cadre of people in the back seat of the car, you know, and, and, and we're talking like, this is one of my old partners from back in the day, you know, we're kicking this case back and forth. You know, what do we do now? What do you, what do you think? Let's, let's go talk to this guy. Let's try this approach. It, it was, it was just, I hate this word, but it was surreal. It really was. Well, Mike, you know, what has it been like seeing the show air and, and revisiting the investigation on your TV screen? It was almost like rewatching the last two years of my life. So it's, it, Joe used a word a moment ago. It did seem surreal a little bit that, that you've went through all these things, but it just brought it right back up. And, um, uh, but, you know, all the, all the hard times that we've explained and things like that um, are, were expected, all the dirty laundry exposed, was expected. We were we are relentless in getting to a solution for this. So we pushed all that aside. We discussed it earlier and we said we don't care about that. All we care about is finding Andrea. So all the things that bother me while re-watching the show are although they're difficult, we fully expected them to be difficult. 
So we, we are fine and we're gonna get through this and uh, keep our eyes on Andrea and uh, nothing else. So I'm curious for all three of you, have any of you received any new leads since the first three episodes of the show has aired? I imagine a lot of eyeballs are on this, uh, more eyeballs, best disinfectant in sunlight, any new leads coming from this? Yes, um, as I said a few minutes ago, um, I have had people reach out to me and lengthy interviews with people who provided me with information specifically about what was going on in Andrea's life the day she went missing, the day before, um, confirming some things about people she was involved with, people who could potentially be responsible for something happening to Andrea. Um, and some of them feel very bad at this point, wishing they had come forward earlier. But they've come forward. And they've come forward because of the episodes. What about you, Mike? Have you gotten any uh, phone calls from people that you didn't expect or anything, any family members, anything like that? No, the, the, the new leads would not come to me directly. Generally, they would go to, to Joe or, or the PI group. And, uh, but, but I am aware of new people coming forward as a result of the series. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this is just the beginning and they continue to come because obviously there's gonna be a lot more people to see the whole thing down the road. And uh, we, we hope this uh, plays a big role in solving this case and, and we can get my uh, daughter home. I want an episode five. And that's yeah. the episode where yeah. we can find Andrea. That will be the best episode I think of all time. And you know, final question here, because I know this has been a very tough conversation to have and it's an ongoing investigation, but what do we hope to see next in terms of developments in Andrea's case, Joe? What, what would kind of be the next logical step? Is it getting a tip, finding it out, and then just seeing Andrea? Or how does it kind of work? Con confirmations of things that we know that will, that will narrow the circle and narrow the potential um, theories about what happened to her down to the one that makes the most sense and the one that we can follow to the end of the trail. That's that's the hope. And I think we're gonna get there. We're close. I think we're gonna get there. The message for the uh, Discovery audience. First of all, I would like to thank the Discovery channels uh, for being interested in my missing daughter, Andrea. Um, we, we are very thankful to so many people, including Missing in America group, Detective Joe, the, the PI group, and the Louisville Metro Police Department. Um, we, we are just extraordinarily thankful for that. I have a personal note to my daughter, Erin, um, and I, I wanna thank her for her uncommon strength, determination and stamina in fighting for Andrea's return. And I wanna tell her that I'm overwhelmed and inspired by the growth that she's experienced over this journey, this dark journey we've been on. And finally, I, I do have a personal note of what I thought Andrea would say to your audience if, if she could be heard right now. And um, this came to me when I was doing about a 10 hour drive home um, just last week. Um, so I believe Andrea's simple but powerful message to anyone who would listen is simply don't wait. Don't wait to help people help them now when they need it. Don't wait till your life's perfect. Don't wait till you accumulate wealth. Don't wait till you retire. Once again, don't wait till it's perfect because that never happens. Help people now when they need it. Help them now would be Andrea's message. Well, thank you all, all three of you for taking the time today. We understand that for you, Michael and Nancy, this can be beyond difficult to say the least to revisit Andrea's disappearance over again. We really appreciate you taking the time and discussing this with us, Joe. Your insight today has been incredible. Thank you for joining as well. And thank you for your tireless effort on solving this case. This was an absolutely incredible discussion. And we hope that the conversation today and our Discovery Plus docuseries, Finding Andrea, will help encourage anyone out there who knows anything about Andrea's case to come forward, as you heard from all three of them today. If you have any tips or know anything that can help Andrea's case, please send them to the Louisville Metro Police Department. 
All lines are open. And to our awesome ID addicts and our viewers today, as a reminder, the finale of Finding Andrea will drop on Discovery Plus this Friday, October 29th. I'm Darren Karp, and thank you so much for joining us.